Hi everybody, today we're going to have a look at creating a sort of sliding stacking door. It's not gonna, there's not going to be enough time to complete the stacking door, but we're going to start with it and the first part of this is to create a panel. As you can see we're using the metric generic model family to start the panel off in. And then we are saving that with the appropriate file name. Like with most families, the next step is now to create some reference planes to constrain geometry to. There are two elements to this panel. The first is the frame and the second is the glass pane that will fit into this family. Creating some offsets that are a realistic distance away from the origin. It's symmetrical the way that I'm creating this. And there is an offset for the frame about 400 millimeters each side another 100 millimeters for the frame this is of course the top view there is the half of the thickness of the glass 10 millimeter offset each way and then for the frame we're making that about a 50 thickness so there we go Let's do that differently and offset it 15 from the other one, then 15 plus 10, 25 times 2 is 50. That's the thickness of the panel, of the frame. Next we're going to name these elements. That element I'm going to name frame. left outer that gives me a description of which reference plan I'm looking at and that's going to be frame left inner and we'll do a similar thing on the right hand side frame right inner frame right outer So it's good practice to name these reference planes. Might become a little bit tedious, but well worth your while in the end. Give somebody else a description of what they are looking at and what the plane is meant for. Gives yourself also the same reference, but of course you can set planes on which you want to model to those reference planes as well. If they're not named, then it's not possible to select them as working plans. Now we're going to have a look at a elevation view. Zoom to the front and we're going to create a another reference plan denoting the height of the panel 2000 and we'll name that appropriately Next we're going to create some shared parameters. We're creating the shared parameter file first of all, then a group for the shared parameters to reside in. This is the panel shared parameters and we'll create them descriptive F for frame, G for glass. W for width, T for thickness, H for height, MAT 
for material so if you have many panels and you want them to operate in the same manner you could of course create these common shared parameters within the text file applicable to all panels these are going to be very useful later on because and it's a good distinction to make that the, the thing between a shared parameter and a shared nested family the shared parameters are easy to attach to different families you've always got them in this text file it's easy to take them in now we're dimensioning and labeling the dimensions with the appropriate dimensions shared parameters we're bringing them into our project from the shared parameter file and we are classifying them as instance parameters in this case we'll do that for the width and in the second set of dimensions there will be to keep the width symmetrical about the origin so we click on the equals assembly constraint on that double dimension and then we label the overall dimension with the width of the frame I see I've neglected to model the reference planes for the frame in the elevation view so that's what I'll do next front top uh, frame top outer and frame top inner one more for the bottom this is usually a little bit wider reason being that one doesn't kick the, the glass pane with one's shoes frame bottom inner Right, so we're labeling our dimensions with the shared parameters. These three are all going to be the same. So we'll dimension three independent dimensions and label them by selecting all of them at once. It's a little bit more efficiency if you have a situation like this. Again, everything instance parameters. Eventually, we'll control them with type parameters in the parent family. This is now looking from the top, and we'll do the thickness of the frame and the thickness of the glass pane. Again, using the equality constraint to keep them symmetrical about the center Yeah, 
that one is hiding behind the 50 all right sometimes just have a good look and see whether you can see that equality constraint might not always be all that clearly visible Right, so we're pretty much at a stage now where we can start modeling some geometry. I'll move these dimensions out of the way so that I can easily model what I need to model. First we'll set the reference plane. And we'll extrude the geometry. And lock this the extrusion profile to the relevant reference plans to make 100% absolutely sure that this family will flex correctly. On the properties you can see that they've got an extrusion start and end property but we'll just control that with an alignment from the top view later for now let's finish off with the extrusion for the glass pane once again locking the profile to the relevant geometry next we'll go and set the constraints on the thickness we'll use the align tool that is the glass pane and we'll lock it into alignment the same with the frame and there's the beginning of our pane We'll bring in the parameters for the uh, material, first create them and then associate them with the geometry that was generated. there's the frame material parameter again it's an instance parameter in this case and then we'll do exactly the same with the glass pane all instance parameters it's all good they'll have a little default next to their name to show that they are instance parameters good practice saving now because we started creating this as a metric generic model we need the door subcategories to come through we open up an empty door from the door family 
and we transfer the object styles across we want to have the symbolic lines for these doors and we also want to map the family onto the door family category and set the parameters to share within the hosts or the parent families into which this family will be nested so when I did this family I um, I started doing this in uh, well I finished in, t in Revit 2016 as well often when you model families you find they might be applicable across various different versions and Revit has improved over the years 2016 is some way off so the alignment tools might not work very well in this case instead I revert to using dimensions tabbing to the point of of that line and then selecting the line and controlling that offset through the dimension and the same can be done vertically there we can lock the dimension All right, so that line is now locked in place 0 millimeters away from the edge and we do the same tabbing to the end point of that line it's not allowing me but it's picking up the end point there and again we then set that dimension to zero that's in place lock we do the same at the bottom if these symbolic lines are not what you require you could of course draw some geometry that is specific to you In this case, we're going to snap to the midpoint of that geometry. And constrain that with an aligned dimension with a equality constraint. That's in the center. See if it flexes. Yes, it does. So we're good to go. And last but not least, we are going to make sure that the categories are set for the objects that we have modeled. This is now ready for the next step.